Another phenomenal breakthrough to celebrate as three Indonesian films selected to be shown during the Khan Film Festival 2023, three films from Indonesia titled Basri and Sama in a Never Ending Comedy, Tiger Stripes and A Distant Call joined the race to achieve the best film title at the 2023 Khan Film Festival in Paris on May 16 to 27. In particular, Basri and Sama in a Never Ending Comedy becomes the first Indonesian short film in history to compete in Cannes Film Festival, one of the comedy genre films and the only Asian film that entered the short film category after managing to qualify from 4,288 registration candidates. Joining us now via live Zoom is the director himself, Kozi Rizal, to discuss about the film and the festival. Hello, Kozi. Good evening. How are you doing? Thank you so much for your time today. Hello, I'm great. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yes, Cozy, I would like to start by congratulating you, first of all, for becoming a nominee for a 2023 uh, short film at the Cannes Film Festival. That is such an amazing achievement. Yeah, thank you so much. So to start, um, we would love to know more about this film, which is Basri and Sama in a Never Ending Comedy. So can you please tell us more about your masterpiece? What is this story about in this film? Well, yeah, so the, the origin of the story was based on my fascination with the Odong Odong itself. And then, like, at the same time, um, yeah, so Odong Odong, uh, there's a lot of them in Makassar. And I think it kind of gives some kind of, like, uh, luminance to the city itself. Because the city, I think it's it has so many problems. It, it is a very bleak city. And then at the same time, I have so many frustration about a lot of things regarding children, regarding Indonesian society and families. And then uh, I wanted to make a story uh, about that. I want to tackle that issue through uh, my admiration towards Odong Odong and create these characters uh, who happen to be a couple who work who own on Odong Odong and entertain lots of kids without having their own. And then they have to go to a family gathering and then they will face, this, face a lot of uh, pressures and unsolicited advice from the family. And in that story, in that event, I would like to tackle so many issues regarding children and Indonesian more like a family, basically. And I'm curious, what is the reason behind um, using Odong Odong in particular as the medium to tell the story? Because, of course, in Makassar, there are other modes of transportation or mediums in which a uh, filmmaker or director would be able to, to choose um, the, the thing that would be the main pivotal part of their story. Why did you choose Odong Odong in particular? Um, because I think we see it as just, for example, a transportation that is mostly for children and it's colorful. But what is the reason of you using it in this movie? Well, actually, I in this particular film, I so at first I didn't start with the story at all. I started with the mm -hmm. Odong Odong, and then um, when I saw it, I was like, okay, I need to make film about Odong Odong someday. But I don't know what kind of story that I would like to make. So it just from the Odong Odong and then like, uh, I wasn't really know what, 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 I'm, what I'm trying to tell in the story. And then I tried to dig in like what the story would be great for this, uh, for this uh, idea. Uh, because uh, I think Odong Odong, I think it looks very cinematic for me. I mean, the RGB lights and by seeing it by my own eyes, it, it, it really looks fascinating. And, and then uh, I think, uh, we're talking about a family, talking about more than family in Indonesia uh, and kids because because kids are really strongly connected with Odong Odong. So I think probably this is the, the best medium to talk about it. And what are the preparations like um, to prepare for this movie in particular? How long did it take from the pre-production, production, and then post-production of the film? 
I would say the longest part will be the pre-production. Oh no, the story development. It took like a, a year uh, mm -hmm. to actually uh, work the story. And then uh, for pre-production, it kind of, yeah, it took quite long, pro probably like three months because mm -hmm. we were working with uh, non-professional actors mm. and my yeah my method would be okay if we're working with the non-professional actors i think the reading and the rehearsal would be a lot because they haven't been in a, in a film before and then um i think the pre-production uh, in terms of like um creating the shots and uh for uh, um uh, uh, like uh, creating the composition and uh, music, it is not really that hard because I, 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 I already imagine like all of them in my head before I actually uh, wrote it. So it, 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 it really, it was really easy for me to do the, the pre-production and then the production we took like a four, four days, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, after the production, we go to Bangkok to uh, do the post-production and we did uh, some kind of color grading in Bangkok. It was granted by mm -hmm. the Singapore International Film Festival to do the, the post-production in Bangkok. And then after that, uh, uh, we just go straight to submit the film. And what was happening was uh, we were looking at the festival that is currently open and that was Film Festival and we just submit it right away. Amazing. And I think that is all what we all would like to know is what did you feel or how were you feeling when you submitted to Con Film Festival and when you finally got the result that you are nominated for the short film in Con Film Festival? We submit the film on January and we didn't really expect to be uh, to, to be selected because I've mm -hmm. been watching lots of short films at the Cannes Film Festival mm -hmm. for past decades, and I kind of like um, uh, kind of like know what kind of films that probably they will like, like very depressing and very artsy film. And our film is not like that actually. Like our film is very campy, very tacky, and not really serious film. And then uh, in, on, in April, we got a phone call from the Cannes Film Festival that we get selected. And we were so shocked because this is, I think, a very uh, historical moment because this is actually the very first short film in the Asian uh, film that gets selected in the Cannes Film Festival. It felt so surreal because being in the Cannes Film Festival is actually one of my biggest dream and Imagine, imagining me being there was so unreal and so surreal for me. So yeah, it, it, I, I was really having fun there. Yes, and it, it is definitely an incredible achievement. Uh, and for Indonesia as well, for being the first short film to be chosen in the Khan Film Festival. And speaking about the movie, why did you choose comedy as a genre that you wanted to pursue compared to other avenues or genres that are available for con? Hmm. Mm, I don't know. It just happened to be comedy, I would say, because um, probably uh, because my previous short films are too sad and too like, uh, you can sense like a really strong loneliness in it, just maybe because uh, that was me as a, uh, as a person back then. But probably uh, as a person and filmmaker, I, I'm now quiet, more open about myself and really, uh, really uh, more honest, you know, and tr really, uh, I could finally be myself. Uh, and I think it happened, it, I think it, it affects my film, it affects the film that I, that I made. And I, yeah, uh, it just happened unconsciously, basically. And I didn't even like thought that the film would be like that. And yeah, I think that's mm -hmm. it. It wasn't intentional. It wasn't intentional. However, it did um, gain a nomination for the Cannes Film Festival. So I would say that is a great achievement in itself. Um, and also, Cozy, 
What are your hopes for the future for Indonesian filmmakers? As a young filmmaker yourself, um, what are your hopes that you, how you want the Indonesian film industry to go about in the future? Probably, I hope that there will be a lot of stories that capture in the east side of Indonesia because uh, mm -hmm. Indonesian films always been centered in the Java Island or Jakarta. We rarely seen films that are set in the uh, east side of Indonesia. And I mean, Indonesia, have a, ha, Indonesia has a lot of islands and hundreds of languages. And I think it would be nice to, to represent those stories in Indonesian cinema. And yeah, I think that would be it. And lastly, what are messages that you would like to express uh, for young Indonesian filmmakers who wish to follow in your footsteps? I think uh, just to be authentic as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. do not be gimmicky, just talk, uh, to just speak about something that you're really concerned about and yeah, just be you. That would be it. Well, Cozy, thank you so much for coming to Tibera World. It is a joy and a pleasure. And again, congratulations on your nomination and we wish you all the best. Uh, thank you so much, Cozy. Thank you so much.